Okay. Good. Everybody ready? Yes. Yeah, great. <laughs> Over. Daniela and I are very excited to launch this year's Force 11 meeting. My name is Melisande Scheld, and I am the executive director at Dryad. I have joined Dryad just several weeks ago, uh, so I am still in the process of learning about our organization, so you'll forgive me for heavily relying on notes and also heavily relying on my colleague, Daniela Lowenberg. <laughs> and I'm Daniela Lowenberg, and I'm a data publishing product manager at California Digital Library. So as I mentioned, my name is Malisanne Scheld, and I've been in academic publishing for about 25 years. Uh, and I joined Dryad just six, seven weeks ago at this point. And it's a really exciting time to have joined this organization. We are, Dryad is about to enter our 10th year of uh, being a leading curated a data depository, repository. <laughs> and uh, we are looking forward to our next adventure, which is significant. As many of you know, as many of you came to hear about, earlier this spring, Dryad entered into a partnership with the California Digital Library, CDL. And this partnership is going to allow Dryad to remain sustainable, uh, to remain flexible. Danielle is going to talk through some of the technical uh, components, not, not too technical, but some of the big picture technology of how we're moving forward. And I'm going to speak a little bit about what that means for our community-led membership. Uh, so why did California Digital Library get involved in this, and what is this partnership? Um, as some of you may have read uh, in the letter we put out last June from our Associate Vice Provost, Gunter Weibel, uh, this is directly in line with California Digital Library initiatives and the mission. Uh, we focus on digital curation and open access to all works. It's a strategic value of ours in the past and moving forward to grow partnerships and to leverage UC resources forward. Um, and California Digital Library is very well positioned within the institutional community as we have the 10 UC campuses that we have experience with. Um, one output at CDL that we have is a product called Dash, which is an open source and nimble technology that we created for data publishing. Um, and this was a big piece of why we wanted to go into a partnership, really, that as you can see from these goals here, they're very similar to Dryad's mission that you may be familiar with, which is to make re curated research data available. And so working together, uh, we want to move our shared values forward. So for Dryad, there were two main partnership goals. The first one is on sustainability. We, as if there are other folks who lead uh, nonprofit organizations or even for-profit organizations in this space, sustainability is getting uh, more difficult. And working with CDL and their technology will help us to continue to provide curated data, uh, a place for curated data in a very nimble, uh, flexible infrastructure. The second partnership goal, which overlaps with the first one, is that we have a, uh, a mission to drive adoption and recognition of research data publications. Uh, you know, we use a shorthand for that. We want to make data publication as normal as article publishing is. <laughs> and anybody who has worked on the article publishing side knows that there is no such thing as normal. But we want to try and make the uh, data publication um, very familiar for the for researchers, for publishers, for institutions, for libraries, uh, just so that it becomes part of a normal workflow and that data publication is not really that dif dif different from article publications. So what does it all look like? Uh, you've probably heard all of this messaging for a couple months now and thinking, <laughs> what's it all about? So we're launching a new Dryad service. So I had mentioned earlier that we had this technology at CDL called Dash. Um, we're actually moving Dryad onto a completely new technology, and while that sounds like it's just a technical thing, it's what's going to allow for a new institutional model, it's going to allow for new features, it's going to allow for a big upgrade uh, into the Dryad service while still remaining that Dryad name with the research community. Um, so we have a new product development team, and that's a mix of the California Digital Library folks uh, and the Dryad folks as well, so we're combining expertise for one team. Um, so while it's a partnership, I am now the Dryad product manager, even though I'm at CDL, and just trying to give some examples of how this partnership's going to work. Um, 
So we're bringing Dryad onto the CDL technology, um, and that's the big focus right now. We're working in an agile way, so we're going for releasing the minimum requirements we would need to get this new service live, and then we're going to be iterating on it and building out features and releasing all the time um, to keep keep up with the community, keep iterating on it, not just uh, remain on past technology for Dryad. Um, some big things for this are that there's an administrative layer, and so we can now, we'll be able to offer transparent reporting for institutions and publishers to actually see what's coming in, coming out uh, from article publications, from the institutions, um, and gain some insight into that, as well as tap into the curation that Dryad has been known for. Uh, we'll also have an enhanced submission features. Uh, so we know uh, from our time, my time at California Digital Library trying to drive adoption of data publishing, to make it happen, we have to have the easiest possible way for researchers to submit. And so not just having manual upload, but this new drive will be focused a lot on how researchers can publish their data from their existing workflows, from the cloud, from dif different mechanisms so we can really innovate and make it happen. So, so uh, we said earlier that there's two goals, it's sustainability and it's adoption. Um, and so one thing that we know both from my experience when I was at PLOS and my experience now at CDL um, is that researchers are really captivated at the point of article publishing. Um, and we know that. And so we need to get into that space more. So Dryad has had relationships with publishers, over 600 publishers, some of you who are in the room right now, for years. And that's why Dryad has had such great adoption. But we want to be able to go back now and actually innovate and upgrade those to API integrations so researchers can actually submit their data when they're submitting their article. Now we know for a publisher to be able to do that, it needs to be really easy for you to adopt as well. And this is where adoption comes back in. And so we're going one step above that and we're talking with the platforms. Um, and so we're talking about what those API integrations with platforms look like where when a researcher is actually submitting the article, it can be a one-click process to send their metadata, send the data files, and we can send back a data citation. So if you're a platform in the room, please talk to me later. If you're a publisher, please talk to me about requirements so we can uh, keep, keep forward on that. But beyond uh, journal publishing, we also know we have to think beyond that point and innovate. So a lot of this is around preprints and electronic lab notebooks and thinking about other ways we can connect in to different parts of the research process so we can make data publishing just lower that barrier and actually allow more researchers to get involved without the manual process. And in that, because Dryad curates every submission, we're going to be producing more curated research data out there. And on the sustainability goals, we are working on a new framework. Uh, we are looking into, we've been marketing test, market testing our uh, new structure based upon membership models uh, where institutions, publishers, uh, and will be part of our membership. We want to create, a, we want to enhance our community-led organization as a non-for-profit, as a community-led organization. It's really your thoughts and the needs of researchers and the needs of the marketplace that we want to continue to develop from. So we are, we have uh, infrastructure now that, that we have in place for the business models. And this conference is going to be a great opportunity for me to speak with a lot of you, whether you think that our modeling makes sense, what you think might uh, work from your organization. So as Danielle is saying, she'd like to talk to folks about the uh, technical integrations. I'd like to talk to folks during this conference and over the next couple of weeks about the membership model and what that means for uh, institutions and from publishers as we want to include and create a community that's led by all of you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, also, to that point, we we also know that the idea of membership organization, membership modeling for businesses is uh, highly talked about. Uh, maybe we understand that there's a little bit of fatigue in this model. But from the initial conversations that we've had, it seems like that is the best way for long-term sustainability so that Dryad can keep operating and keep uh, preserving the rich data research from uh, the research community. So you'll be interested to hear what folks' thoughts are on a membership-led <laughs> business model. 
So we really just wanted to introduce what's going on. It's been a little bit since we put out the big announcement, but we wanted to kind of give a little more insight into where we're headed, what we're doing um, in regards to business model and product. But we want to hear from you. Um, we, we're not going to be building this alone. So join us as a community, but let's talk. What questions? Thank you. Questions? Good. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's all uh, so much interesting. Uh, any questions, please? Just raise up your hand. Hi, Erin Robinson from ESIP. Um, so I guess what I'm curious about is maybe how you guys are seeing the interaction between Dryad and um, domain repositories and how, how that might work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I think the data publishing space in general is interesting because we know that it's there's commercial, there's institutional, there's open source, and there's domain. And there's varying levels of competition within the space. And I always like to point out that domain is not competition at all to someone like Dryad. So we want to work in conjunction with the domain repositories. So we've already started um, talking with the NIH about the NCBI repositories and how there could be a connection between those. Um, I know that you're in the ecological community. It would be super great to talk about some of those repositories as well. It's as easy as us connecting to an article as much as we can connect to another repository. And if we have the same values, we should be working together. No questions? Hi. Um, at the start, you mentioned you were going to be launching a new product. Would you be able to say a little bit more about what that is? Yeah, so the product we're talking about is uh, the launch of Dryad on a new technology, so a new service offering with these new features. Um, and so we're working right now full steam ahead to migrate Dryad onto the new platform. Um, and modify and enhance some of the features that we have. Um, and we don't have a launch date right yet, but everything is public on our GitHub. Um, we encourage the community to get in touch. Um, but we are trying to do this as soon as possible, so we're hoping for early 2019 is when we're going to be able to have this for the community. Hi. When the new platform launches, um, will there be ability to use sort of a private mode for researchers as they get their data in before they're publishing, maybe even a year or two before? Yeah, so uh, we know that a really important part of this is having a private feature. So we do have something we call private for peer review, and that means that researchers can actually submit and keep their data private e while it's during peer review with a URL that the reviewers can use or that their lab can use. Um, but also just being able to upload and have those in version before it actually ever gets to curation or published out. <laughs> okay, questions here. Thank you. Um, are you thinking about integration also with platforms that deal more with code? So for example, GitHub or um, CodeOcean? Yeah, so um, I've been talking with CodeOcean. Um, we're also looking at other spaces, uh, MyBinder, and uh, we're, we've been talking a lot with Jupyter and, and all, the, all the things. But if you have a connection you want to talk about, we should talk details. No, but <laughs> I'd be curious if you can give us some, some more detail as to how that's going to function and how it's going to appear on the new platform. Um, I think it's, it all works in a similar manner, uh, and there's going to be specific to every integration, but something like code could be where you're actually able to 
have a link out to the code and back or with in the case of a Jupyter notebook that's our most concrete right now mm -hmm. it would be something where you could publish your data while you're in Jupyter um, and it could probably also send the notebook with it as well to be within that package thanks any more questions okay thank you so much uh, next session will be at 10 o'clock thank you so much Great. thank you